Hello everybody and my friends of Facebook. How is it going? This is Father Jose coming to you from All Saints Parish here for the Sunday Reflection on the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time A, which uh, today the Gospel tells us about this woman uh, from Tyre and Sidon. Hello Yolanda, how are you? Uh, Sarah, it's good to see you. We can see that people. Ling, how are you? I miss you. And uh, Judy, good to see you as well. Well, it's a beautiful day today. My eyes are dry, so just give me a second. All right, I can see you better now. <laughs> okay, so, hello, Veronica, good to see you. Muchos saludos. Hey, Julie, how are you? Oh, it's good to see all of you. So, I am opening now my reading right here. Let me see. You know how it is with technology when you need it. So, all right. It was the 20th Sunday. I'm sorry. In my mind, I'm still in the 19th. I'll change it. Okay. Hi, Kathleen. Good to see you. David, good to see you. Josie, good to see you. Everyone joining. I'm going to hide the comments. That way I don't get distracted when I am speaking, okay? Um, we are going to do um, the gospel reading. And actually, before I do the gospel, I'm going to do the preface for the first Sunday in Ordinary Time. And that's going to lead into the conversation for uh, this reflection. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so since it is a preface, we will say, The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is the gospel for today, which is from the gospel of Matthew chapter 15. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came, came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. And he said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. And then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All right. So here we are with the Sunday Reflection. It is a very difficult Gospel. Uh, first of all, we have to remember that this is the story of a Canaanite woman from the cities or, or the region of Tyre and Sidon. Now, Tyre and Sidon is as far north as Jesus went. Here in Michigan, we love to go up north. 
So if we really want to talk about up north where Jesus certainly was the Galilee, but even farther up north was Tyre and Sidon. And uh, according to the New Testament, this is as far as Jesus went. She certainly was a foreigner. And there is this apparent rejection on the part of Jesus and of his disciples, of course. Lord, please heal my daughter. She is tormented by a demon. And the answer of Jesus is dead silence. Has it ever happened to you, like when you're talking to somebody and they are trying to get something out of you, but you don't want to say one way or another and you just look at them? That happens to me a lot because uh, people tend to, especially when they see people in authority or spiritual um, authority, they want us to make decisions for them. And that's not how it works. And so people are asking me and I am just looking at them because they have to make their own decisions and take responsibility. Well, in this case, this woman is pleading to Jesus, please heal my daughter. And Jesus answers with dead silence. That happens to me a lot, actually, with uh, perceived rejection when it comes to interacting with people. I can give you several examples. You know, many times as a priest, I have to push the envelopes of people uh, so that they may insist. If they are serious about something, they have to insist. Uh, God does want to work miracles in people's lives, but people also have to put their part. You know, uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you some examples. My secretary is very well trained. Um, people call for the priest all the time, all the time. And of course they call the priest when they need the priest or they need the church or they need something from the parish, right? Uh, and so my secretary is very well trained. She says to the people, oh, you need something from Father. Okay, what about if you catch him at the end of Mass this weekend? And then there is like dead silence because they don't go to Mass, of course. The most demanding people that I have found in a parish are the people that actually are not involved at all and don't come to Sunday Mass. And I'm talking about, in general terms, is not only, not just this time of pandemic. I'm talking in general, even before pre-pandemic, especially that. Um, for example, the couples for marriage. The majority of people that are seeking marriage during this time are people that don't go to church. They want to look pretty for the, for the Mass, uh, for the pictures, and they want to walk down the aisle and all those details and the whole nine yards uh, but I don't see them on Sunday at Mass. So when we do we do marriage prep? After Mass. What time, Father? After Mass. No, but what time, Father? Um, after Mass. And before Mass, you make sure to come and say hello to me. That's my way to make them go to Mass because they have to work for it. And, and some people may see that insistence of my part or lack of uh, uh, insistence as, as a rejection. But in reality, it's not a rejection. It's I'm pushing the envelope so that people can actually take ownership of their own faith. I'm not going to solve the problem for them. Only God can do that if they let him. People get really demanding, especially, for example, um, every time there is somebody who is experiencing some kind of paranormal activity in their homes, 99% of the time is is perception. Uh, but when people uh, are experiencing that, they don't call the Protestant pastor. They call the Catholic priest. You know. So, And when they start getting demanding, I am like, okay, all right, so you're experiencing this thing. Let me ask you one thing. What mass do you normally attend? Dead silence. Uh, Father, uh, my mom is a long-time parishioner. No, I'm not asking you about your mom. I'm asking you about you. What mass do you attend? It is almost like pulling the rug under their feet. And, and that's the thing is that they may perceive that as rejection, but I'm not rejecting. What I'm actually doing is pushing the envelope. Okay, you want something from the church? You want to put of your part too. And I am not asking much. All I'm asking is, Come to Mass. 
I mean, how hard that is. And this is the thing, is that God sometimes pushes our envelopes to see how we are truly, uh, cap are truly capable of insisting from Him. For God, instant gratification doesn't work. One day delivery guaranteed doesn't work. God will make you wait. God wants to see your persistence, your insistence, the persistence of your prayer, and your commitment for what you are asking for. So we see that aspect of, of, of the gospel today. Jesus certainly is pushing the envelopes of this woman, this foreigner woman that pleads for her daughter. Now, there is another aspect to this whole story because you are very familiar with this passage. And this passage also reveals that Jesus was very Jewish. He was a Jewish man. Of course, Jesus is God, the second person of the Trinity in the flesh. But beyond that, Jesus of Nazareth, the one that was walking on earth, he was Jewish. His disciples were Jewish. They belonged to the people of Israel. And the people of Israel were the chosen people. So let me expand about this, this concept in this uh, uh, reflection today. For example, the disciples right away are telling Jesus, send her away. She doesn't even belong to us. She is not part of the people of Israel. She's a foreigner. She's bothering us. She's bothering you. Just send her away. The problem is that Jesus' answer don't help because Jesus' answers actually uh, make things more complicated, okay? And I know that biblical scholars and preachers have struggled with this passage trying to mask the answers of Jesus, almost like a press conference. He didn't really mean that. This is what he really meant. But this is what Jesus said. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And this woman doesn't even belong to that group. So, so Jesus is basically saying, look, I got a job in stages and my priority are the people of the house of Israel and, and the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And you're not even part of that. You're even beyond that. And the woman continues to insist, Lord, help me. And Jesus' second answer is even worse. It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. Wow. Yep, that's what the scripture, according to Matthew, recorded. That Jesus said something like this, almost like an insult. He is definitely, in a very blunt way, is reminding the woman that she is not in the inner group, that she is not an Israelite. But it is her persistence that made Jesus act. Please, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. So you can see that she was not ready to give up. She knew that Jesus was his, her only hope for her daughter. And so at this point, Jesus has pushed her buttons as far as possible. And she was not going to give up. And so that's why Jesus answers, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done to you as you wish. So at that moment, I can picture the disciples' jaws dropping. So you're actually going to help her. Mm-hmm. Yep. Jesus is flipping the coin right there. He is teaching the disciples something. Because the disciples are under a misconception. They believe that they are the chosen people, Israel, and that they were chosen by Jesus to exclude. That's why they say to Jesus, send her away. Instead, what Jesus is teaching the disciples, 
by actually listening eventually to the plea of this woman is that God chooses for a mission. And this is the thing is that we always are in between this tension because God chooses for a mission. But unfortunately, we human beings choose to exclude. The disciples knew they were chosen, but they, were, they thought at the beginning that they were chosen to exclude. But Jesus instead is teaching them by this experience that they were chosen, but for a mission. I can give you many examples of how human beings, due to their fallen nature, they choose to exclude. We choose to exclude. For example, the evil of racism. We choose people of one race as worthy of praise to exclude the rest. The evil of abortion, it's called pro-choice. Why? Because they choose the life of the mother in order to exclude the life of the child. And that's exactly the temptation for us that live in our fallen nature, is that we think that we have been chosen to exclude. And even the disciples fell into that temptation. But Jesus is showing them that they have been chosen not to exclude, but for a mission. Did Jesus of Nazareth at the end accomplish the mission of going everywhere? Jesus didn't really go that far. He lived him, uh, he was born in Bethlehem. He died in Jerusalem. He spent most of his public life in Galilee, went as far as Tyre and Sidon. When he was a child, he was in Egypt. That's as far south as he went. Jesus was in a very limited geographical area of the world. Who were the ones that actually accomplished the mission of going everywhere? The apostles. And that's exactly how the Gospel of Matthew ends. Go to the ends of the earth. So eventually, the apostles actually understood that they were chosen not to exclude, but they were chosen for a mission. They did it at the end. But in this particular passage that we read on this weekend, they were not ready for that. They did not understand that. They had the wrong understanding that they were chosen to exclude. The disciples eventually got the memo. They are the ones that changed their hearts in order to accomplish the mission, the mission of Jesus. We heard today in the first preface for Sundays in Ordinary Time that as we are speaking to the Father, we are reminding the Father all the wonderful things that God had made for the world and how God has chosen the church. And the church, in the first preface of Ordinary Time Sundays, says that the church is a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people for God's own possession. I'm going to repeat this. The church is a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people for God's own possession. Now, we, the church, may be tempted due to our fallen nature to think, well, we are all of this in order to exclude. But that's not the reality because the preface continues by saying that we were chosen, that we are royal priesthood, we're a holy nation, we are a people for God's own possession in order to do what? To proclaim everywhere the mighty works of God. For you, Lord, have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. So as you can see, humans choose to exclude, but God chooses for a mission. And as a church, we have been chosen for a mission. You were chosen on the day of your baptism. You were not chosen to exclude. You were chosen for the mission of the church. He has called you out of darkness into his own wonderful light. So live according to that call. You are chosen for a mission. God bless you and have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.